Hi to all of my ELA friends. Thank you for joining me here today. My name is Miss Lee and I teach third grade at McGillivray Elementary School and I'm so happy that you've joined uh, me here and actually it is an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, I first want to start off by saying that um, we acknowledge and we know that this time might be really different for a lot of us at home right now and it's okay to have those feelings because even teachers and adults feel that as well. Uh, we would want to be in the classroom and just be with our students and see um, your faces and hear all your thinking in our ears and 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 those conversations. But we know that right now that we just can't and we hope that we will get back to a time we can. Um, but we want to reassure you that you are doing your best and that even just by being here and participating with us, you're doing a great job. So. What we're talking about here today is, or actually in the past few weeks, you have been talking about determining important ideas through nonfiction text. Now we're going to switch over and talk about finding those important ideas within fiction text. And not just any kind of fiction, but we're going to look at something very specific in fables. And so what we want to do is that we want to you to hear and think about the fiction stories and we're going to determine what the important ideas are, and we call those themes. So books and stories can have more than one theme in them, and themes are usually a message or a lesson about life that the author wants us to understand or consider or connect with in our own lives. Um, so today we're go you're going to hear and think about a story. You're going to visualize it in your mind to understand and enjoy it, and then we'll go ahead and think about some themes that we think are in the story. So thanks for being here and let's get started. Fables are a special type of story with animals as characters and with an important theme or a lesson about life in them. Today we're going to hear a fable called Mad Madame Rhinoceros and her dress. It is about a lady rhinoceros who goes shopping for a new dress. I'm going to be reading fables out of this book called Fables by Arnold Lobel, and the publisher is HarperCollins Publishing. Um, I, this is the first time that I'm going to be reading it through to you. Uh, if you want to grab a piece of paper right now before I begin so you can write things down as I go, you may. Or after I finish, you can uh, go ahead and do that and write some uh, notes down uh, as I uh, ask some questions. If you have someone to talk to at home and you want to discuss the story, you're more than welcome to do that too. Uh, this first time around, I want to ask you to visualize the story in your head so that you can enjoy and understand this fable. Uh, you can close your eyes if you want so that you can make these pictures really your own. Uh, when it comes to the fable about Madame Rhinoceros, or Madame Rhinoceros, and her dress. This is the picture that is provided by the author and illustrator. But I'm sure you're going to want to make some of your own as you hear this story, or this fable. Madame, Madame Rhinoceros and her dress. Madame Rhinoceros saw a dress in the window of a shop. It was covered with polka dots and flowers. It was adorned, or decorated, with ribbons and lace. She admired it for a moment and then entered the shop. That dress in the window, said Madame Rhinoceros to the salesperson. I would like to try it on. Madame Rhinoceros put on the dress. She looked at herself in the mirror. Mm, I do not think this dress is at all attractive on me she said. But, madam, said the salesperson, you are completely wrong. This dress makes you look glamorous, which means stylish, and alluring, which is another word for attractive. If only I were sure, said Madame Rhinoceros. Ah, madame, said the salesperson, Everyone who sees you wearing this dress will be filled with admiration and envy. envy. Envy means to be jealous or jealousy. Do you really think so? 
said Madame Rhinoceros, turning around and around in the front of the mirror. Absolutely, said the salesperson. You have my word, which is basically saying, I promise. Very well, said Madame Rhinoceros. I will buy the dress and I will wear it now. I'm going to stop real quick right here and ask you, what has happened in the story so far? I'll repeat it one more time. What has happened in the story so far? Madame Rhinoceros left the shop. As she walked up the avenue, she saw that people were smiling and laughing at her. Admiration, thought Madame Rhinoceros. She saw some people were shaking their heads and frowning. Envy, thought Madame Rhinoceros. She continued up the avenue. Everyone who saw her stopped and stared. Madame Rhinoceros felt more glamorous and alluring with every step. I'm going to stop right here and ask two more questions. What did you picture happening in the story? And how did you picture Madame Rhinoceros? I'll repeat those questions again. What did you picture happening in the story? And how did you picture Madame Rhinoceros? So what did you think? What did you visualize while I was reading? What has happened in the story so far? What did you picture happening in the story? And how did you picture Madame or Madame Rhinoceros? Yours might be similar to the picture that I, the illustration that I showed, or it could be completely different. And that's totally great because you're the one making the picture in your mind as you visualize. So kind of think about these things before we go on to the second reading. Okay, now this will be the second time I read through, and this time I want you to be thinking about what themes or lessons that you might take away from this fable, um, kind of around Madame Rhinoceros, since she is the main character of this fable. What can we learn? Madame Rhinoceros and her dress. Madame Rhinoceros saw a dress in the window of a shop. It was covered with polka dots and flowers. It was adorned or decorated with ribbons and lace. She admired it for a moment and then entered the shop. That dress in the window, said Madame Rhinoceros to the salesperson. I would like to try it on. Madame Rhinoceros put on the dress. She looked at herself in the mirror. I do not think this dress is at, it's at all attractive on me, she said. But Madame, said the salesperson, you are completely wrong. This dress makes you look glamorous and alluring. Basically saying you look stylish and attractive. If only I were sure, said Madame Rhinoceros. Ah, oh, Madame, said the salesperson. Everyone who sees you wearing this dress will be filled with admiration and envy, which means jealousy. Do you really think so? said Madame Rhinoceros, turning around and around in front of the mirror. Absolutely, said the salesperson. You have my word, I promise. Very well, said Madame Rhinoceros. I will buy the dress and I will wear it now. Madame Rhinoceros left the shop. As she walked up the avenue, she saw that people were smiling and laughing at her. Admiration, thought Madame Rhinoceros, which means she felt that they were admiring how beautiful she was. She saw some people who were shaking their heads and frowning. Envy, jealousy, they're just jealous, thought Madame Rhinoceros. She continued up the avenue. Everyone who saw her stopped and stared. <sighs> Madame Rhinoceros? felt more glamorous and alluring with every step. So now that you heard it for a second time, or you can even watch this video again, think about what lessons that this author might be wanting us to learn from that fable. 
now that you've heard it a second time and you're really focusing your mind and your thoughts um, on the lesson or the theme of that uh, fable, um, this is my question. What lesson do you think people can learn from the rhinoceros in this story? I'll repeat it another time. What lesson do you think people can learn from the rhinoceros in this story? And you can use this sentence starter if you'd like. You can say, I think the lesson is blah, blah, blah. And the reason I think this is, and support your answer uh, with a reason from what you heard in the fable. And what did you think? I wish we could go back and forth and kind of hear each other's ideas and I could agree or disagree or listen to that conversation. But since we can't, I'm going to kind of maybe go over some of the possible lessons or themes that I think this fable was uh, teaching me through Madame Rhinoceros. And I think one of the first themes might be that some people might say things to sell you something or make you do something they, they want you to do. The reason I think this is because the salesperson started saying how the dress looked so great on Madame Rhinoceros because the salesperson wanted her to purchase it. She, he, he or she wanted the sale. And I think sometimes people do say things because they want other people to do something. So I think that could maybe be a lesson uh, to learn from it that you know, sometimes if someone wants you to do something, they might just say things to get you to try to do that. I think another possible theme could be trust yourself or your own thinking. The reason I think this one is because at the beginning when Madame Rhinoceros tried on the dress, she said she looked at herself in the mirror and said, I don't think this looks very good. And then the salesperson started trying to convince her otherwise. And so maybe a lesson would be trust yourself, trust what you're thinking or your gut. When you know something, trust it sometimes. Um, I think another possible theme or lesson author is trying to say to me by this fable is don't be fooled by what others tell you. Um, I think a, it's a little bit different than the first one because what I was thinking, the reason why I was thinking this one is because I think Madame Rhinoceros kind of wanted to think that the dress looked good on her and was fooled by the words because that's what she wanted to hear. So um, these are the kind of the themes that I was maybe thinking, and maybe you would agree with me, maybe you would disagree with me, and that's okay, because each person might get a different message or, or, or even the similar message from the author, um, just as long as we know that we're thinking about the lesson that we are to learn from them as a reader. I hope you enjoyed the first fable where we we're trying to determine the important idea or the theme of it. And um, we're going to re repeat that with fable number two. I'm going to read it the first time where I want you to visualize in your mind what's happening in the story. So we kind of get the gist and find out what's going on. And then the second time, you're going to follow along with me as I read so that you yourself can read it and also think of what could be the possible lesson or the theme that the author is trying to tell us through the main character. Hi. I'm going to now read the second fable out of this book that we've been enjoying. And this one is called The Young Rooster. It's about a young rooster who gets a new job. Um, I'm going to read it twice. Uh, this first time, again, is for you to visualize. You can close your eyes if you would like. And um, I want you to really make the images in your mind as you hear the story so that you can understand and enjoy it better. The second time is going to be just like we did before where you think of uh, themes or lessons that the author might be might want you to learn from this fable. Um, but this time, instead of listening to it, you're going to follow along um, in the reading. Okay, so here we go. The young rooster. A young rooster was summoned to his father's bedside, which means he was called to his father's bedside. Son, my time has come to an end said the aged bird or the old bird now is your turn to crow up the morning sun each day the young rooster watched sadly as his father's life slipped away early the next morning the young rooster flew up to the roof of the barn he stood there facing the east i have never done this before said the rooster i must try my best he lifted his head and crowed. 
a weak and scratchy croak was the only sound he was able to make. The sun did not come up. Clouds covered the sky and a damp drizzle fell all day. A damp drizzle is like light rain. All of the animals of the farm came to the rooster. This is a disaster, cried a pig. We need our sunshine, shouted a sheep. Rooster, you must crow much louder said a bull. The sun is 93 million miles away. How do you expect it to hear you? Very early the next morning, the young rooster flew up to the roof of the barn again. He took a deep breath. He threw back his head and crowed. It was the loudest crow that has ever crowed since the beginning of roosters. The animals on the farm were awakened from their sleep with a start. What a noise, cried the pig. My ears hurt, shouted the sheep. My head is splitting, said the bull. I am sorry, said the rooster, but I was only doing my job. He said this with a great deal of pride, for he saw far to the east, the tip of the morning sun coming up over the trees. We're at this spot again now where I ask, what did you think? What did you visualize? So what has happened in the story so far? What did you picture happening in the story? And how did you picture the rooster? Now for our second read, if you could follow along as I read and think about themes or lesson uh, that Arnold Lobel is trying to relay to us as um, he wrote this fable, that would be fantastic for you to think about. So you're gonna follow along and think about themes or lessons that we can get from this fable. The young rooster. A young rooster was summoned or called to his father's bedside. Son, my time has come to an end, said the aged or old bird. Now it is your turn to crow up the morning sun each day. The young rooster watched sadly as his father's life slipped away. Early the next morning, the rooster flew up to the roof of the barn. He stood there facing the east. I have never done this before, said the rooster. I must try my best. He lifted his head and crowed. A weak and scratchy croak was the only sound he was able to make. The sun did not come up. The clouds, sorry, clouds covered the sky and a damp drizzle or a light rain fell all day. All of the animals of the farm came to the rooster. This is a disaster, cried a pig. We need our sunshine, shouted a sheep. Rooster, you must crow much louder, said a bull. The sun is 93 million miles away. How do you expect it to hear you? Very, very early the next morning, the young rooster flew up to the roof of the barn again. He took a deep breath. <gasps> he threw back his head and crowed. It was the loudest crow that was ever crowed since the beginning of roosters. The animals on the farm were awakened from their sleep with a start. What a noise, cried the pig. My ears hurt, shouted the sheep. My head is splitting, said the bull. I am sorry, said the rooster, but I was only doing my job. He said this with a great deal of pride, for he saw far to the east the tip of the morning sun coming up over the trees. Now that you've had a chance to hear it and follow it along, what do you think is a theme or lesson of this fable. What in the story makes you think that? Now that you've had some time to think, I'm curious to know, what did you think the theme or the lesson was in this fable? What in the story makes you think that? If you have your student's response book, you can enter this work into page 69. If you don't, any type of piece of paper or a notebook that you have to keep your thoughts down would be wonderful. And 
The question here on the top of this paper, it says, what is a theme or lesson in this fable? Share your thinking with your partner and then write it on the lines below. Remember to give reasons from the story to support your thinking. So I know that I need to write what I think the theme of the lesson is. There could be more than one, of course, we know that. Um, you, if you are able to share your uh, thinking with a partner or a family member or a friend, please do it and, and you then write it down. And also remember to give details or text evidence uh, from the story that supports your thinking. Why did you think that? What's your reasoning? And well, this is what I wrote down. I said, I think one theme could be to keep on trying even if it doesn't go so well the first time. The reason I think this is because the young rooster didn't give up. The first day the sun didn't come up and everyone made him feel bad about the complete failure. But the next morning, he persisted and tried again. So I stated what I thought was the lesson or the theme. And I also told the reasons why and gave evidence or reasons from the book or the story to support what I was thinking. Make sure you go ahead and write that down and maybe you can come up with one or two themes uh, from the story. So hopefully you have a fiction IDR book as we are looking at themes um, in them right now. And um, sometimes the theme of, a of the story doesn't really become clear until the end of the book or the end of the story, um, but you might be able to guess um, what you think the author was trying to say or what the lesson would be in, in the book from what you've read so far. So today, as you IDR, you might want to think about what could be some themes or some lessons in your story. Um, and, and then also to think about what makes you think that. What do you think the author wants readers to learn or realize from the story that you're reading? Okay, and what makes you think that as well? Um, hopefully you have enjoyed the two fables like I have, and I will see you soon in just a little bit to share with you some more.